ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد ايها الاخوه والاخوات respected brothers and sisters السلام السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we seek His divine aid, we seek His assistance. For whomsoever Allah azza wa jal guides, none can misguide. And whomsoever Allah azza wa jal misguides, none can guide. I be witness that none is right to be worshipped, except Allah azza wa jal alone without any partner. And I testify that the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wa salam is his final prophet and messenger. As for proceeding insha'Allah, tonight we begin the reading of a poem titled Manhaj al-Haq The True Path written by the great scholar of Islam Sheikh Abdul Rahman ibn Nasir al-Sa'idi rahimahullah ta'ala Sheikh Abdul Rahman ibn Nasir rahimahullah ta'ala was a great scholar of this ummah and he was an alama he was a master of many sciences of the Islamic discipline he was a faqih he was a jurist and he wrote extensively on fiqh and usul al-fiqh he was also a great Mufassir, he was a great scholar of Tafsir and he has a well-known work in the science of Tafsir. And his full name was Sheikh Abdul Rahman Ibn Nasir al-Sa'idi Rahimahullah Ta'ala and he was born in the year 1307 Hijri. And he hailed from a city in Qasim, in the Qasim region in Saudi Arabia known as Unayza. And Sheikh Abdul Rahman produced many students which shows the caliber of his knowledge Rahimahullah Ta'ala the most notable being Shaykh Muhammad Ibn Salih al Uthaymin, Rahimahullah Ta'ala and so Shaykh Abdul Rahman he wrote this poem this mandhuma in the early part of his life he wrote it whilst he was in his thirties and he wrote this poem which contains many benefits clarifying the true path which is becoming of each and every single Muslim to follow and to traverse. Firstly, each and every single Muslim needs to know what is the correct path and secondly, they need to traverse and they need to adopt this path. In terms of their Aqidah, in terms of their belief, in terms of their Ibadah and in terms of their Ahlaq. It becomes imperative, particularly in these times wherein we find lots of misconceptions and lots of doubts that a Muslim must know what is the true path in his traversing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the year after and so this age of difference of opinion and this age of doubts and confusion is something which was prophesized by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where Allah as well mentioned in his book in Surah Al-An'am verse 153 where Allah mentioned وَأَنَّ هَذَا صِرَاطِي مُسْتَقِيمًا فَاتَّبِعُوا وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا السُّبُلْ فَتَفَرَّقَ بِكُمْ عَنْ سَبِيلِهِ Surah Al-An'am verse 153 Allah mentions and he says وَأَنَّ هَذَا صِرَاطِي مُسْتَقِيمًا Verily this is my straight path فَاتَّبِعُوا So follow it and do not follow the many diverging paths فَتَفَرَّقَ بِكُمْ عَنْ سَبِيلِهِ Because this will take you away from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in relation to this verse, there is a story. And once the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu was with his companions and he drew a straight line in the sand. And on the right of the, and the left of this path, he drew many diverging paths. The Prophet Muhammad then said, هذه السبل, these paths, عَلَىٰ كُلِّ سَبِيلٍ مِنَا شَيْطَانٌ يَدْعُوا إِلَيْهَا The Prophet Muhammad said that these paths on the right and the left, these diverging paths He said at the head of each and every single one of these paths there is a shaitan calling towards it And then the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he read the verse وَأَنَّ هَذَا سِرَاتِي مُسْتَقِيمًا فَاتَّبِعُوا That verily this is my way and my path so follow it and do not follow the many diverging paths because it will cause you to deviate 
from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger alayhi salatu was salam another text which shows us clearly that this ummah would split amongst themselves is the hadith reported in Abu Dawud where the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu was salam said if taraqatil yahudu ala ihda wa sab'ina firqa that the Jews split into 71 sects وَافْتَرَقَتِ النَّصَارَ عَلَى سْنَتَيْنِ وَسَبَعِينَ فِرْقَةً And the Christians split into 72 sects وَسَتَفْتَرِقُ هَذِي الْأُمَّةِ عَلَى ثَلَاثِ وَسَبَعِينَ فِرْقَةً كُلُّهَا فِي النَّارِ إِلَّا وَاحِدًا And this Ummah, the Ummah of the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wassalam would split into 73 sects Each and every single sect would be in the Alfaya except one each and every single sect would be in the al fire except one. And so naturally, the companions of the Messenger of Allah, alayhi salatu wasalam, they asked, Man hiya ya Rasulullah? They asked, Who is this one sect that will be saved? The Firqatul Najiyah, the saved sect. The Prophet then said, Man kana ala mithli ma ana alayhi wa ashabi. The Prophet said, They are those who are upon the like of what I am upon on this day and my companions. And so this in essence is the true path that each and every single Muslim should adopt and traverse in terms of their belief, in terms of the ibadah and in terms of the akhlaq. It is as the Prophet Muhammad said, they are upon the like of what I am upon as well as my companions. This in essence is manhajul haq. This is the true path. This is the path of the Prophet Muhammad والسلام, and his companions. And so Shaykh Abdul Rahman, he begins um, this risala with a call. And he begins this poem with a call. And he says, فَيَا سَائِلًا عَنْ مَنْهَجِ الْحَقِّ يَبْتَغِي سُلُوكَ الطَّرِيقِ الْقَوْمِ حَقًّا وَيَسْعَدْ He says, رحمه الله تعالى, O oh, one who asked about the, the true path, Seeking to follow the people in truth and by way of this following they attain happiness. And so the author he begins this poem with a call to each and every single one who intends to find the truth and to follow the truth. And so he says Fayasa ilan an manhajil haq O one who asks about the true path. And this is a call from him rahimahullah ta'ala to each and every single individual who aims to find the truth and so he says ya sa'ilan an manhaj al haq the one who wants the true path meaning the straight path the path of guidance by which he obtains salvation and success and happiness in dunya and akhirah because there can be no salvation for a believer except by following the truth and adhering to it. And in these opening lines where the where the the poem the poet says, Faya sa'ilan and manajil haqi yabdari, O one who asks about the true path seeking. In this opening lines is a call towards Islahun niyyah, rectification of one's intention when posing a question. So when you ask about something, what should your intention be? Your intention should be to obtain the truth. And this is the correct way to pose a question. That when one poses a question, the question should be aimed at finding the truth and then removing ignorance from oneself and then from others. As I mentioned, رَفْءُ الْجَهْلِ عَنْ نَفْسِهِ وَغَيْرِهِ To remove ignorance from oneself and from others that when you pose questions it should not just be merely for the sake of obtaining information but rather we should sincerely be seeking out the truth to adhere to the truth this should be the objective when posing a question because sometimes we find ourselves in um, a class and we pose a question but we pose a question to get at someone or to prove a particular point the first and foremost objective of posing a question is to remove ignorance 
from oneself and from others and so this is a call to each and every single individual who intends to find the truth and so uh, Sheikh Abdul Rahman begins by saying Fayasa ilan an manajil haqqi yabtaghi and he says O oh, one who asks about the truth O oh, one who asks about the true path who asks about the true path and what does he ask about? he asks about an manhajil haqq and this is the important question what is the true path? how do we as Muslims know what is the correct path to be followed? it is the path which is bayin and it is the path which is wadih the true path it is absolutely entirely clear bi idnillah and it is the path which is sought by each and every single Muslim the path which he ad adopts and he takes towards in terms of his aqidah and in terms of his ibadah and his akhlaq and so Abu Sheikh Abdul Rahman goes on to mention yabtaghi suluka tariq al qawmi haqqan wa yas'ad he seeks by way of this question about knowing the true path he seeks to follow the path of the people in truth he seeks to follow it in truth and by way of following it in truth he obtains happiness he obtains happiness in dunya but more so in the year after and so when he seeks by way of his question about the true path he seeks two things firstly to follow the path in truth he wants to know the path in order to follow it and then secondly to obtain happiness and dunya, in dunya and akhirah because there is no real way to obtain this except by traversing the true path and by this question the questioner gathers between two things and that is the wasila and the ghaya he gathers between the path asking about the path and also obtaining the goal of following this path and about this Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala he says in his book as sawaiq al-mursala he says fahahuna he says here is two important things here is two important things he mentions there is a wasila and a ghaya there is a path and there is a goal a path which leads you to the goal and so the path it is guidance the path which each and every single believer seeks out it is the path of guidance and secondly this path leads you to the goal which is happiness and success so the one who does not reverse the path will not reach the goal mentioned in as sawaiq al musara so here we see the importance of knowing the path and then secondly traversing the path because that path leads to the goal and so the goal is to obtain happiness in dunya and akhirah and this only comes about as a result of knowing knowing the true path the shaykh mentions suluka tariq al qawm seeking to follow the path of the people and what does this really refer to following the path of the people because this is not really clear what people is the shaykh referring to here does it refer to our forefathers does it refer to the people you find in your society who we deem to be religious who is tariq al -Kaw? who is the path the true path to be followed tariq al -Kaw. so the shaykh defines it as the path of the people the path wherein there lies no crookedness therein the path of the messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam and his companions radiallahu ta'ala anhum jami'an and the word qawm here in this poem it refers to the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam those who were the forerunners in goodness in terms of knowledge and action that their path is most worthy of being followed and there are many verses to prove this such as in Surah At-Tawbah 
verse 100, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions, As-sabiquna al-awwaluna min al-muhajirina wal-ansar wal-lazina taba'uhum bi ihsanin radiyallahu anhum wa radu'an. So what are the proofs to prove the fact that this is the path that each and every single Muslim should follow? That the path to be followed is the path of the companions radiyallahu ta'ala anhum jami'an. The verse in Surah At-Tawbah, verse 100. When Allah Azza wa Jalla mentions As-Sabiqoon Al-Awwaloon That the forerunners of Al-Islam Min Al-Muhajireen Wal-Ansar From those From amongst the Muhajireen Those who migrated And left off Their wealth And their families For the sake of Allah And they left Mecca And they migrated To Madinah They were known as the Muhajireen Wal-Ansar And the Ansar The helpers those companions who resided in Medina and who helped those who migrated towards Medina. وَالَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوهُمْ بِإِحْسَانٍ And those who follow them in righteousness. رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ وَرَضُوْعًا Allah mentions about them that Allah Azza wa Jal is pleased with them and they are pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so this proves that the path to be followed, it is the path of the companions of the Messenger of Allah there are many other texts which prove this fact like the hadith which we quoted in the beginning wherein the Prophet Muhammad also mentioned in, as has been reported in Sunan Abi Dawood that the Jews split into 71 sects and the Christians split into 72 sects and he said this Ummah will split into 73 sects each and every single one of these sects will be in the Al-Fayyah except one. And he was asked, who are they, O Messenger of Allah? And he said, they are those whom are upon what I am upon today and my companions. So this proves, without a shadow of a doubt, that the path to be followed, it is the path of the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam and his companions and those who follow them in righteousness. And there are many statements from the Salaf of this Ummah to prove this fact. Uh, from amongst the great scholars of this Ummah, Al-Awza'i rahimahullah ta'ala, who was a scholar in the early generation to follow the companions in righteousness, he said, Isbir nafsaka ala sunnah. He said, have patience with yourself upon the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, alayhi salatu wa salam. And he said, waqif haythu waqafa al-qawm. And stop where the people stopped. And look at the terminology which he uses. He uses the word qawm. Just like Shaykh Abdul Rahman said, Tariq al qawm the path of the people. And qawm here, it refers to the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum. Wa qul bima qalu, and say just as they said in terms of the religious matters. Wa kuffa amma kafu an, and abstain from what they abstained. Wa sluk sabila salafika as salih, and adopt and traverse the path of your pious predecessors, meaning the companions of the Messenger of Allah. And he says, فَإِنَّهُ يَسَعُكَ مَا وَسِعَهُمْ And he says, for it will suffice you what suffice them. Whatever suffice them in terms of their religion, in terms of their belief, in terms of their ibadah, and in terms of their akhlaq, it would surely suffice us. Why? Because Allah said about them, رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ وَرَضُوْعَنْ and so this proves that this is the path of the companions of the Prophet Muhammad About this, about the fact that the path to be followed, it is the path of the companions, Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala mentions in his book Madariju Salikin, he says, there is no doubt that what Rasulullah sallallahu and his companions were upon in terms of knowledge and action, it is knowing the truth and putting it before and preferring it over everything else. That this is the true path of knowledge and action. It is the path of the Prophet Muhammad and his companions. So if we know the great status of those who traverse this path, فَلَا تَسْتَوْحِشْ Then do not feel lonely when you come to know of the true path and you traverse it. As some of the Salaf said, 
اسم الصرف سيد سيد عليك بطريق الحق ولا تستوحش لقلة السالكين they said upon you is to follow the path of truth and do not become lonely of the few who follow it فلا تستوحش لقلة السالكين do not become lonely when you traverse this path and you find that the people who follow this path are few in number وإياك وطريق الباطل ولا تغتر بكثرة الهالكين and he gives a warning and he says and beware of the path of falsehood and do not become deceived by the many who follow it sometimes we see that certain groups have big followings and this is how we determine the truth the truth in Islam is not determined by the large number but rather the truth is determined by the truth the truth is determined by knowing the truth and then you would know the path so he mentions وَلَا تَغْتَرَّ بِكَثْرَةِ الْهَالِكِينَ and do not become do not become um, deceived by the many people who follow the path of falsehood do not become deceived by the many people who follow the path of falsehood and so if you feel overwhelmed by your loneliness of traversing the path of truth, look at your companions who came before you. So who are you striving to meet up with? You're striving to meet up with the companions of Rasulullah and the Prophet Muhammad himself. And so be keen to meet up with them. And so if we closely investigate the path of those who came before us, and their methodology and we look at our own conditions we will recognize our shortcomings and our shortcomings in following their way in terms of them being consistent upon the worship of Allah and giving importance to matters of the heart and outer character and they remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala much then we will come to know of our shortcomings and we will come to know that their path is the path to be adopted and followed. Shaykh Abdul Rahman then mentions and he says Fayasa ilan an manhaj al haqqi yabdaghi suluqa tariq al kawmi haqqan wa yas'ad. He says, O oh one who asks about the true path seeking to follow the people in truth attaining happiness. And so here, Sheikh Abdul Rahman mentions Haqqan, to follow the path of the people, and we mention the people refers to the companions of Rasulullah Haqqan, in truth. That when they seek out this path, they come to learn this path, and then they seek to follow it in truth. He seeks to follow this path in truth, and not just a mere claim. To say that I am a follower of the Messenger of Allah and his companions, is not just an a mere claim, as I say, a iddi'a, a mere claim. Because many people attach themselves to this path by merely claiming that they follow the companions of Rasulullah Wasallam. However, we will find that these individuals, a'udhu billah, they revile the Sahaba. They curse the Sahaba and they believe that this is part of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or, they learn about the great status of the companions and they are giving importance to ibadah and matters of the heart and character and they exceed those limits which they set. And so following this path it must be in truth and it must not just be a mere claim because many people attach themselves to this path by merely claiming so. So people claim to be upon this path but they oppose the teachings of the companions عنهم. so what is the result of following this path in truth what is the result of following this path in truth Sheikh Abdul Rahman mentions يَبْتَغِي سُلُوكَ طَرِيكِ الْكَوْمِ حَقًّا وَيَسْعَدْ so after adopting this path in truth the person obtains happiness and we mentioned this is the goal to obtain happiness in dunya and in akhirah 
and there is no way to obtain this except by traversing and knowing the path of truth and this is the goal to obtain eternal happiness and there is no way to obtain this except by following the true path Allah Jal says in Surah Taha verse 123 he says فمن اتبع هدايا فلا يضل ولا يشقى that when whoever follows my guidance and yet Allah Azza wa Jal attaches a guide, guidance to himself he says فمن اتبع هدايا فلا يضل ولا يشقى whomsoever follows my guidance this person will never be led astray ولا يشقى and this person will never ever be sad meaning this person will not be sad in the year after. The person will obtain salvation and happiness by being admitted into Jannah. And so here we see guidance, it is attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is true guidance. The guidance which Allah Azza wa Jal has revealed in his book and in the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In another verse, uh, in Surah Al-Nahl verse 97, Allah Azza wa says, من عمل صالحا من ذكر أو أنثى وهو مؤمن فلا نحيينه حياة طيبة ولا نجزينهم أجرهم بأحسن ما كانوا يعملون. Allah mentions that whosoever works righteousness from amongst males and females with the condition that they are believers in Allah and believers in Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم. Allah mentions فَلَا نُحْيَنَّهُ حَيَاةً طَيِّبًا Allah Azza wa Jal will give them a happy, pure and wholesome life in the life of this world وَلَا نَجِزِيَنَّهُمْ أَجْرَهُمْ بِأَحْسَنِ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ And in the year after, in the akhirah, Allah Azza wa Jal will recompense them with a reward greater than the deeds which they used to do And so this path Following the true path of guidance, it leads to salvation in dunya and in akhirah. And so whoever follows the path of the companions of Rasulullah and their successors, and those who follow the companions in righteousness, those who followed them in righteousness, then this person, he is the happy one. This person will be a Sa'id. This person will be the one who is truly happy. This person will be the one who is truly happy. The next verse of this poem, the Shaykh mentions and he says, تَأَمَّلْ هَدَاكَ اللَّهُ مَا قَدْ نَظَمْتُهُ تَأَمُّلَ مَنْ قَدْ كَانَ لِلْحَقِّ يَقْصِدُ The Shaykh mentions and he says, contemplate and investigate Hadaq Allah, may Allah guide you. Ma qad nadamtuhu, what I have written and what I've composed in these lines of poetry, ta'amula man qad kana lilhaqi yaqsidu. The type of contemplation done by someone really seeking the truth. And so this is the second line of this poem. And in this, the Shaykh calls us to investigate these lines of poetry by contemplating it and pondering and reading over it often until its meanings become entirely clear to us and then the Sheikh makes a dua and he says Hadaq Allah he says may Allah Azza wa Jal guide you sometimes a person tells you Allah Yahdik or Hadaq Allah may Allah guide you and we take offense to it however this is a blessed dua from the Sheikh for the one who reads this poem and he studies it closely and the meaning of this dua hadaq Allah it means may Allah decree guidance for you and make you of his guided servants may Allah as well guide you and may he make you from amongst his guided servants and so here we need to raise the question and that is what is guidance how do we define guidance and guidance it is a means to traverse uh, the true path and to be steadfast upon it and to know its tafasil and to safeguard it up until death so guidance it means to traverse the true path to be steadfast upon this path 
and to know its tafasil, to know its various details, and to safeguard oneself upon this path up until death. This is this is guidance. As Ibn, uh, Ibn Rajab rahimu wa ta'ala he said Amma su'al Ibn Rajab rahimu wa ta'ala he said Wa amma su'al al-mu'mini min Allah al-hidayah he says as for the asking of the believers from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance he says fa inna al-hidayata naw'an they know that guidance is of two types he says hidayatun mujmalatun guidance in a general sense and a general manner wa hiya hidayatun lil islam wal imani wa hiya hasilatun lil mu'min he says and this guidance the general guidance it is guidance toward islam and iman and this is obtained by each and every single believer that they are guided towards islam and they are guided towards iman this is obtained by each and every single believer and then he says وَيْدَايَةٌ مُفَصَّلَةٌ and then guidance which is more extensive guidance which is more extensive وَهِيَ هِدَايَةٌ إِلَى مَعْرِفَةِ تَفَاصِيلِ أَجْزَاءِ الْإِمَانِ وَالْإِسْلَامِ and he says this form of guidance it is to know and to recognize the details of Iman and Islam وَإِعَانَتِهِ عَلَى فِئْلِ ذَلِكَ and also Allah Azza wa Jal aiding him and assisting him to do those things to do all of these aspects which is conclu conclusive of Iman and Islam that Allah Azza wa Jal guides him towards executing that وَهَذَا يَحْتَاجُ إِلَيْهِ كُلْ مُؤْمِنٍ لَيْلًا وَنَهَارًا and this each and every single believer requires night and day وَلِهَذَا أَمَرَ اللَّهُ إِبَادَهُ أَنْ يَقْرَأُوا فِي كُلِّ رَكَعَةٍ مِنْ صَلَاتِهِمْ كَوْلَهُ إِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ And so he says that this form of guidance is the guidance which the believer requires night and day. And for this reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided them, Allah azza wa jal guided them to recite this dua in each and every single raka'ah of the salah اِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Oh Allah Jal guide us towards the straight path and this is the path wherein they recognize the details of Iman and Islam and he also mentions وَكَانَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ and the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, used to often say in his applications during the night prayer اِهْدِنَا لِمَخْتُلِفَ فِيهِ مِنَ الْحَقِّ بِإِذْنِكِ إِنَّكَ تَهْدِي مَنْ تَشَاءُ إِلَىٰ صِرَاطِ مُسْتَقِيمِ That the Prophet Muhammad used to say, O oh Allah, guide me to those matters wherein your servants have differed. Guide me towards the truth therein by your will. بِإِذْنِكَ إِنَّكَ تَهْدِي مَنْ تَشَاءُ إِلَىٰ صِرَاطِ مُسْتَقِيمِ For indeed, you guide, you guide whomsoever you will to the straight path you guide whosoever you will to the straight path and so the author says he says تأمل هداك الله he says look contemplate and investigate closely هداك الله may Allah Azza wa Jal guide you ما قد نظمته and so this is a blessed dua from the Shaykh رحمه الله تعالى for the one who reads this and he says هداك الله ما قد نظمت may Allah as well guide you ما قد نظمت to that which I have written in um, this poem تأمل من من قد كان للحق يقصد he says look and investigate closely at the truth the type of investigation of one who seeks out the haqq and so this once again it is a call towards rectifying one's intention it is not just sufficient to know the haqq but rather one should adopt the truth wherever they find the truth and so this is a call towards rectification of intention 
The third line of this poem the Sheikh mentions نُقِرُّ بِأَنَّ اللَّهَ لَا رَبَّ غَيْرُهُ إِلَاهٌ عَلَى الْأَرْشِ الْأَضِيمِ مُمَجَّدُ He mentions, رحم الله تعالى نُقِرُّ We affirm بِأَنَّ اللَّهَ That Allah لا رب غيره That there is no Rabb غيره That there is no Rabb Other than Him سبحانه وتعالى إِلَاهٌ عَلَى الْأَرْشِ أَرْشِ الْأَضِيمِ مُمَجَّدُ إِلَاهٌ إِلَاهٌ the Ilah who is upon the Arsh, the great Arsh, Mumajjadu, and he subhanahu wa ta'ala is majestic. And so here he mentions, we affirm this, Nukirru, we affirm and we submit to it. We affirm this in our hearts, but we also submit to the fact that there is La Rabba Ghiru, that there is no Rabb besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we affirm بِأَنَّ اللَّهَ لَا رَبَّ غَيْرُهُ That Allah Azza wa Jal is singled out in terms of His Lordship subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what we call the concept of rububiyyah. The concept of Lordship. That Allah Azza wa Jal has no partner with Him in this aspect. In the aspect of Lordship. In the aspect of rububiyyah. And this means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He alone is the Khalik, He alone is the Creator, He alone is the Malik, He alone is the Owner, and He alone is the Controller of absolutely everything in the Alameen. Each and every single thing in the universe, Allah Azza wa Jal is the Creator, the Owner, and the Controller of this, and He has no partner and helper in this matter. In this matter of Lordship of Rububiyyah, Allah Azza wa Jal is singled out and He alone has this right. As Allah Azza wa Jal ordered the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu salam to say in Surah Al-An'am verse 164 Kul wa huwa rabbu kulli shay. Say O Muhammad alayhi salatu salam to the people should I seek out any other than Allah Azza wa Jal as a Rabb? Wahua Rabbu kulli shay? While He is the Rabb of absolutely everything in existence. And about this, uh, Ibn Kathir said in his tafsir, Yaqulu ta'ala Allah says, Qul, say O Muhammad, alayhi salatu wa salam, li ha'ulai al-mushrikeen. Say to those mushrikeen, those who ascribe parties with Allah Azza wa Jal in worship, في إخلاص الإبادة له والتوكل عليه أغير الله أبغي ربا say أطلب ربا سوى should I seek any رب besides Allah سبحانه وتعالى وهو رب كل شيء while he is the رب of absolutely everything يربيني ويحفظني ويكلؤني ويدبر أمري while he سبحانه وتعالى is the one who nurtures me, the one who cultivates me, and the one who protects me, and the one who controls absolutely everything. A meaning, لا أتوكل إلا عليه. I do not place my trust in any other besides this Rabb Subhanahu wa Taala. ولا أنيب إلا إليه. And I do not turn in repentance to any other besides him. لأنه رب كل شيء ومليكه ولا الخلق والأمر. Because he is the Rabb of absolutely everything and he is its controller and owner وَلَوُ الْخَلْقِ And to him belongs the creation and the command. And so we only place our trust and we only submit to this Rabb subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the author mentions نُقِرُّ بِأَنَّ اللَّهَ لَا رَبَّ غَيْرُهُ We affirm that Allah Azza wa Jal, there is no Rabb other than Him. There is no deity who truly possesses Rububiyya. That is truly the creator, that is truly the owner, and is truly the controller of absolutely everything besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And He has no partner in this. He has no partner in this. And so Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala mentions, and he says in Majmur al-Fatawa, he says, Wa Rabb. That the term Rabb, 
هو المربي الخالق الرزاق الناصر الهادي The Rabb سبحانه وتعالى He is the Murabbi He is the one who nurtures He is the one who creates He is the one who sustains And He سبحانه وتعالى Is the one who gives victory And help and support And He is the one who guides وهذا الاسم أحق باسم الاستعانة والمسألة And the one who possesses these attributes of the rububiyyah, and this is only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this deity is most deserved of being seeked help from and asking for fulfillment of your needs. And this is only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This only belongs to Allah azza wa jal alone without any partner. That Allah azza wa jal is the Rabb and this aspect of Lordship is something that each and every single human being affirms because as the hadith of the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wa mentions كل مولود يولد على الفطرة that each and every single newborn is born upon the fitrah and then the parents make them a Jew, a Christian or a Magian so the baby, when the baby is born, the baby has this natural ability to believe in a Rabb and to submit to a Rabb, to believe that there is a creator, to believe that there is a sustainer and to believe that there is a deity that controls absolutely everything. However, after the child is reared and they become influenced by the religion of the parents, they then lean towards that particular religion. But Allah Azza wa Jalla has created each and every single human being with this natural innate ability to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to know that Allah azza wa jal is the Rabb of absolutely everything and so this aspect is something which is part of the fitrah it is something which is part of the natural innate nature of a human being that Allah azza wa jal has created each and every single human being with to affirm that there is a Rabb and that this Rabb is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Shaykh then mentions نُقِرُّ بِأَنَّ اللَّهَ لَا رَبَّ غَيْرُهُ إِلَاهٌ عَلَى الْأَرْشِ الْأَظِيمِ مُمَجَّدُ That we affirm that there is no Rabb except Allah. إِلَاهٌ He is the Ilah. He is the Ma'bud. He is the Deity who is upon the great Arsh. And this is something which comes back to our belief when it comes to the question, if we ask the question, Ain Allah. If we were to ask the question, where is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And the common response we would get when we ask this question is that people would say that Allah Azza wa Jal is everywhere. And of course this is an incorrect claim. But upon um further questioning and asking a person what do you mean by this they will then say that Allah Azza wa Jal is everywhere in terms of his knowledge and his sight and so this question might seem like a strange question but the Prophet Muhammad والسلام, he used this question to establish Iman and once he asked a slave girl he asked the question Ain Allah explicitly asked the question where is Allah and she said in other narrations, she pointed above. She pointed above. And the Prophet then asked, Who am I? She then said, You are the Messenger of Allah. And the Prophet then freed her upon that grounds, upon the fact that she was a believer. So, it might seem like a strange question, but the Prophet Muhammad he used this question to establish true belief. And so, our belief is that Allah Azza wa Jal is above his throne in a manner which befits his majesty he is the deity who is upon the great throne and this is a description of the throne of ar-rahman the arsh of ar-rahman which is the roof of the creation and it is the highest point of the creation and it is the biggest creation that the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not something which is metaphoric. It is something that is real. It is something that is created 
But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a wisdom which Allah Azza wa Jal knows best and Allah Azza wa Jal is not in need of His creation. And so the Arsh, it is the roof of the creation, it is the highest point and it is the biggest creation. And for this reason, Allah Azza wa Jal described the Arsh as being um, Azim, as being great. Allah Azza wa Jal described the Arsh as being great and he described it as being majestic. Dul Arsh al Majid. So Allah Azza wa Jal is the possessor of the majestic throne. Because it is the biggest creation and it is the most vast creation. It is the most vast creation. So the meaning of this line where Shaykh Abdul Rahman mentions Ilahun al Arsh al Azim Mumajjad. The meaning of this line is that this Rabb subhanahu wa ta'ala whom we affirm there is no Rabb other than him he is above this great throne in a manner which befits his majesty as he informed about himself in numerous places in his book Allah mentioned in Surah Al-Taha verse 5 he mentioned subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah mentioned Ar-Rahman ala al-Arsh istawa Ar-Rahman that the most merciful has risen above the throne the most merciful subhanahu wa ta'ala has risen above the throne in a manner which befits his majesty and about this about this very verse the great scholar of Medina Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala he was asked كَيْفَ istawa? how did Allah Azza wa Jal rise above the throne Imam Malik reacted in the following manner he said al istiwa ma'lumun he said that Allah azza wa jal's rising above the throne is something which is well known it is something which is well known wal kayfiyatu majhul the modality as to how this took place it is unknown this is something which is specific to Allah azza wa jal and Allah azza wa jal cannot be comprehended Subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is was su'al anhu bid'ah and to ask questions regarding the manner and the nature of things in relation to Allah Azza wa Jal it is an innovation and I see you to be an evil man so exit from my gathering and so Imam Malik inherited this belief from those who came before him the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and this is the way they dealt with um, aspects which describe the nature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meaning his names and attributes they simply affirmed him upon its literal meaning and they did not delve into the modality of it because it's not upon us to know how this took place but rather Allah Azza wa Jal has entrusted us to believe in these matters and not to know the reality of how these things occurred and so Allah mentioned Ar-Rahman ala al-Arsh istawa in Surah Al-Taha verse 5 that he mentions that Ar-Rahman the most merciful rose above the throne and so he mentioned this in numerous other places of the Quran in six other places in the Quran Allah mentioned thumma istawa ala al-Arsh that Allah Azza wa Jal rose above the throne subhanahu wa ta'ala in a manner which befits his majesty and so it is not for us to delve into the modality of this and to know how this occurred but it is only upon us to believe in these matters it's only upon us to believe in these matters so our belief is as Sheikh Abdul Rahman mentions here نُقِرُّ بِأَنَّ اللَّهَ لَا رَبَّ غَيْرُهُ That we affirm that there is no Rabb other than Allah إِلَاهٌ He is the deity um, worthy of worship who is upon the great Arsh مُمَجَّدُ That we believe that Allah Azza wa Jal is above his throne subhanahu wa ta'ala in a manner which befits his majesty subhanahu wa ta'ala The last part of this uh, line of poetry it mentions Alal Arshil Azimi Mumajadu that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Mumajad that He subhanahu wa ta'ala is majestic 
and he subhanahu wa ta'ala is the praise one and to him belongs all praise and majesty subhanahu wa ta'ala that he is the one who is truly praised and he is the one who is truly deserved of every form of praise subhanahu wa ta'ala the one for him is true majesty and vast praise which has no restriction and no end each and every single creation praises Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala however we do not comprehend how they praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so Allah Azawajal's majesty is vast and those who praise him are many which has no restriction nor any end and for this reason the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu was salam he used to say in his supplications La uhsi thana'an alayk anta kama athnayta ala nafsik that the Prophet Muhammad used to say in his supplications La uhsi thana'an alayk I cannot enumerate praise for you subhanahu wa ta'ala that I do not have the words to praise you subhanahu wa ta'ala anta kama athnayta ala nafsik you or as you have praised yourself subhanahu wa ta'ala so Allah Azawajal's praise is something that cannot be enumerated and it cannot be restricted because each and every single creation in the heavens and the earth praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but we do not comprehend the praise of Allah Azawajal and so Walaid Hamd uh, tonight we covered three lines of this poem titled Manhajul Haq and it is the first three opening lines of this great poem authored on the true path to be followed by Shaykh Abdul Rahman Ibn Nasir al Sa'di Rahimahullah Ta'ala and we will commence in our next lesson with uh, line number four Bi Idnillah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala we end upon this note Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته